Hello, and uh, welcome to another online live event from Sigma. This one we're uh, we're working with uh, the lovely people at Campkins who are having their fantastic weekend this weekend of photography, the Cambridge Photography Weekender. So uh, lovely to be involved with that, and um, I hope you're all enjoying what uh, what great things are online for them and on offer uh, this weekend. But uh, my name's Steve from Sigma, and I'm joined today by with Tim my colleague uh, from uh, our marketing department. And uh, we thought we would uh, take an opportunity to, to look at one of our uh, really successful lenses, uh, the 100 to 400 telephoto. Um, soon as we're going into spring now and things are changing, hopefully, aren't they, Tim? We're going to be able to get out and about very soon, all being well. It certainly looks that way. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, certainly I'm looking forward to it. Definitely. It's been a been a long old year, hasn't it? <laughs> not, hasn't not it just? Pictures. Yeah. Hasn't it just? So, it's... Uh, um, I think we've only really seen each other over the internet over the last year or so, which is, which is really strange, isn't it? So we'll 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 get back to meet face to face at some point in the near future, hopefully. Yeah, but uh, absolutely. yeah, but but talking about getting out and about, this is what this one hundred to four hundred is 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 so great for. It's uh, it really is a, a versatile lens, and I think that's the key word for this little chat today. I think versatility, isn't it? So um, yeah, yeah, that, yeah but where we is. want to. Start start with this fabulous product then Tim well I think like you say it's um it's very much you know when you think of a, a sort of a, a telephoto zoom you you tend to think of a kind of a, a wildlife lens don't you really is people who yeah. want to use it for sort of fast action stuff sports yeah. you know um air shows bird back garden birds all that kind of stuff yeah um and uh, and it certainly does that that's very much it's uh, that's kind of its bread and butter i suppose this lens but um but it's actually quite a versatile lens for for other stuff too um uh, because it's 100 to 400 at the at the wide end uh, it's mm -hmm. kind of perfect for portraits so you, you know yeah a, um, yeah well 100 has always been very much a kind of a fixed portrait lens i mean our 105 macro hugely successful not just as a macro lens but as a telephoto portrait lens so as exactly. you say, it, it starts from that focal point, which I think um, it, it's easy to forget that and tend to use it for the 400 mil, the top end, isn't it? But, uh, exactly that. Yeah. So, um, I mean, yeah. And we, we can have a look at a portrait um, just to see what it's like in a minute. And you, you can see, you know, it, the, 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 the sort of the background blur, the bokeh is the, the, yeah. the quality of it is very good. Indeed. Yeah. It's, it's very attractive, just as you would expect from a regular portrait lens, you know, like an 85 mil or a or a 135 yeah. or something like that so it's a it's exactly. a fantastic um it's a fantastically versatile lens and the other thing that it's very good at is that it can it can focus relatively close um mm. because it's got that that reach um you can shoot sort of macro style shots with it too so mm. if you're shooting flowers or butterflies or or um yeah, yeah. details of some sort you, um, you can get then, getting close to nature with it as well exactly that yeah so i think that the magnification ratio at the at the long end is uh, one to four ish, one to four point one, I think it is. So uh -huh. it goes in pretty close. And so when you're fully zoomed in, uh, you can get to within about, uh, I think it's, is it 1.6 meters? I think it is. Yeah, 160. Yeah, meters, I think, I think, it, I think is. it is around that, if I remember yeah. rightly. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is... So not far away, really. It's like less no. than less than my height, about, well, about your height, isn't it, Steve? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I'm, I'm the same <laughs> height as um, Deck from Anton Deck, actually. And he's six oh, really? foot two. Yeah, he's six no foot way. two in real life. It's only right. the camera that makes him look very much shorter than he really is. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, it's the same yeah, for me. Course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, you can get for the again. We'll have a look at a couple of images in a bit, and um, yeah, yeah, see. see yeah, what good. So, but, yeah, I was going to say because I think did I not say to you before we did this? Why don't you nip out into your beautiful little um, village where you live? And get some images so we'll come to them shall we because i know you were hoping to get into cambridge weren't you at one point but yeah things yeah. Haven't, haven't happened in that way but no uh, no we had it was a bit of a downpour so uh, <laughs> yeah exactly car, so uh so your local village instead but uh, instead of the beautiful yeah. city of cambridge but uh, yeah but your city uh, your village i'm sure just as beautiful Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's not not You're quite right. as big, but uh... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but now we look forward to seeing some of those images that you took. Yeah, good. Yeah, great. Well, let, should we have a look at the um, at where the lens sits in the lineup at the, at the moment? Yes. So we Let's do that. Um, Sigma spent the last well, the last twelve eighteen months maybe just uh, kind of 
uh, producing um, mirrorless lenses for E-mount yeah. and L-mount. So that's any Sony full-frame camera or APS-C yeah. camera for that matter. Um, uh, plus uh, any Sigma full-frame camera. So that's the FP and the FPL plus any mm -hmm. Panasonic full-frame camera um, plus any Leica camera. So those are the three L-mount uh, fittings. So you can use it on yep. lots of different cameras. Um, and uh, we've... We're now up to 24 of those lenses in our range. So um, so I'll just bring those up so you can take a look. So th Excellent. there they are. Those are the 24 um, that we've got. And you'll recognize some of those that you've probably seen them over the last couple of months that we've been quickly releasing. The, what, the I series there. Um, yeah, yeah. The I series is in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a really comprehensive selection of, of, of lenses now, isn't it, for this, for this mirrorless full frame? That's right. That's right. And this 100 to 400 is the... Is the longest in that lineup the, the mm -hmm. 400 yeah, well the, at least at the uh, the zoomed in yeah uh, and yeah. it's, it's it's the longest it goes so um so it ranges from 14 mil at the uh at the wide end if you like uh, with our 14 yeah. mil prime uh, right yeah. up to 100 to 400 um so we've got quite a big sort of range of focal lengths there to choose from and, and this one is the um is the longest lens we do mm. um and it's been picked. It's been received very well, hasn't it? It's, uh, it has. It really has. Yeah. And we should say at that point as well that that um, people will have noticed and that all of our full frame mirrorless lenses are given the designation DGDN, DG for full frame, DN for mirrorless. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, there is the version of this one hundred to four hundred that was our previous, which is the DG version, um, right. which was designed specifically for full frame digital cameras. Um, so there is that option again, which is available in, in obviously Canon and Nikon fit in those foot in that full frame, and then to yeah. the DGDN, which is available for the, the Sony and the L mount. Um, so we're covering all of the the options there. But yeah, um, you that's... can bring up a picture of that actually, so you can see them next. To yeah, you. it's just it's just something to remember that there are the two variants, and if you're buying for for Sony or for for L mount Panasonic Leica our FP then it's the DGDN ver version you look for. And if it's for the Canon or Nikon, then there is the DG version as well. And they're, they're, they are incredibly similar, although there are some internal differences in, in, in the construction of, of the elements, et cetera, which we might come to just briefly. But, but um, yeah, two variants for those different formats that are available. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, the top one there, which is the, which is the newer of the two, this is the one for the mirrorless cameras. Um, yeah. I suppose that the key difference is, uh, there's a few differences, but probably the most most noticeable are uh, externally are that you can see on the right hand side of the top lens there that there's yeah. kind of a, a rubber ring that goes around the um, almost next to the mount. That's uh, it. And that is a that when that ring is removed, you can attach a, um, a tripod collar. Um, mm -hmm. uh, really so useful. There, there's the collar, the TS111. Uh, yeah. And that just um, that just takes the pressure off the mount a little bit, takes the you know the strain off the mount when you when you're yeah. carrying this, um, and yeah. it just allows you to mount the the lens and the camera more kind of centrally on the tripod, so it's so it's weighted more in a more balanced way. Yeah, um, and that's available separately. That that tripod color, 130 pounds. Yeah, it was but, a good um, addition to the product. It is. Mm. It is. Yeah, it just makes it just feel a bit more stable on the um, mm. on the tripod. Um, but it's actually quite a light lens. So you don't necessarily need a tripod collar. You know, you can handle no, you, it quite comfortably. You really can, can't you? Yeah, it's yeah, easily. Yeah, no, no, yeah, it's no problem with that at all. I've got the weight here. Actually, it's uh, it's a hundred and uh, let's see, uh, one thousand one hundred and forty grams. So just just over a kilogram, um, hmm. and uh, and not that big. So with the hood on, you're looking at less than thirty centimeters, and then fully zoomed yeah. in with the hood on, you're looking at thirty five ish. Yeah. It's um, it's remarkably compact really for, for something that offers four hundred mil in, in focal length. Oh yeah, very much so. Yeah. Mm. It's it's very small and light. Remarkable really. Um the body's made from a um a, a, a polymer called thermally stable composite, which is a uh it's not metal, it's a it's a it's a mm. type of plastic. It feels very much like metal and it behaves like metal in that um, it expands to about the same degree, expands and contracts depending on um, temperature. Uh, yeah. And that means that when it's used alongside aluminium, everything is expanding and contracting at the same rate. And so mm. you don't get any bizarre behavior at no, strange exactly. temperatures. You know, the, the, the amount of play is very negligible and all that kind of mm. stuff. So it's a, it's a very so, clever material. 
so again, designed to to be used in all extremes, really, isn't it? From, from yes. as you say, whether that's out on safari, that kind of thing. If we had yeah. the joy of being able to do that kind of thing, but when we do, then it's ideal for that. But again, if you're just in a in a wet and windy field somewhere trying to take a picture of a kestrel, again, it's it's designed for all of those sort of elements. Yeah, and it's very well built. I mean, it's super super robust, very sturdy, um, feels great in the hand. It's got a nice yeah. rubberized. Um, uh, zoom ring on there um, and the, one of the nice things about this lens is that um, you can you can use the zoom ring to zoom in and out but it's also got push pull zoom uh, so mm. it's designed so that you can do that mm -hmm. um, and actually when the lens hood's on it's not on the moment obviously but when the lens hood's on you can you yeah. have a better grip on it and you can push pull really easily and it can just be a, a sort of a faster way of working if you're just sort of out there and a bird kind of you know you can just rather than exactly um, rather than twisting um, yeah, yeah 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 actually if I just excellent should, should, I'll show you this uh well i've got it here. i'll show you this rubber ring that covers the oh yeah the rubber exactly that just, there, yes, pull, just pulls off doesn't it that's right and creates the space yeah. for the uh for the exactly. tripod adapter exactly yeah, yeah. Mm. that's the one yeah so it's a good fantastic thing um so should we talk a bit about these buttons on the side because they're um exactly they're yeah it, it's loaded with a few buttons there isn't it so uh um, yeah. yeah let's let's go through those and explain what they're for yeah so top one is just an af MF switch. Uh, most yeah. lenses have got that. Certainly, all Sigma. Uh, have all Sigma lenses got it? I think they have, haven't they? I'm just yeah, trying to I think there's any that haven't. Off there. the top of my head, I would think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but still, a good thing to have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then there's um, there's a focus limiter, so you can have it so that it focuses through the entire focusing range, or if yeah. you know that you're not going to be using part of that range, you can speed up focusing by mm. limiting it to a certain. Um, yeah. Sort of. Uh, Again, something which tends to get used on macro lenses a lot. Um, yes, used on our one hundred and five, both in the medium, in, both in the mirrorless format and also in the full frame mm. format. Yeah, that's yeah. It. So if you're shooting seabirds, for example, you know they're going to be quite a way away from you. So there's no point in asking the lens to exactly. search for focus in the between naught and ten meters or whatever, uh, because they're not going to be that yeah. close to you, sort of thing. Yeah, it just it's going to speed up the process. Yeah. Uh, and then it's got an AFL button here, which sits mm -hmm. very nicely where the thumb is. So when you're shooting, it, this thumb just happens to sit over there. So it's very sort of ergonomically designed. It's, it's very yeah. nice. And the AFL button um, can be customized depending on the camera you're using. So on this Sony, for example, this is an A7, uh, A7 III, there mm -hmm. are probably 50 or 100 different things you can customize it to. You can go, you go right. to the screen on the back of the camera and you're like, blimey, there's... You can yeah. pretty much set it to anything, you know. So I think a lot of people set it to auto IIF and that kind of stuff. There. Yeah. But you can set it to whatever you want, really, as long as it's... But it, of course, that depends on the camera. You Not every camera gives you an option for everything, but... Um, exactly. Most are going to lay to white balance or whatever it is you want to change. Uh, and then yep. the bottom button is uh, image stabilization. There's two modes. Mm -hmm. The first mode is for just, just sort of general um, IS. So if you just out and about and shooting, you just want to give yourself mm -hmm. a bit more stabilization, especially useful at the at the fully zoomed in, uh, you know, the longer end of the focal range, because, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, shake is more apparent at that end. At that, um, at that yeah. end. Uh, and it's very good stabilization. It's extremely effective. You know, it gives you about four stops of, um, of, of advantage. Wow. So that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, and then mode two is for panning. So it um, eliminates um, uh, uh, shake from the other axes apart from the panning axis. So you can pan smoothly without the uh, without yeah. the stabilization trying to kick in, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that, that's very effective as well. So it's, yeah, it's a fantastic thing. And then the only other button on it is this um, is this lock switch here. And that locks the lens at 100 mil. Uh -huh. So that if you're carrying it around your neck and you're doing a bit it, of walking. There's no chance of it, yeah, exactly, falling through. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to expand on its on its own. It will yeah. just stay. But it really do it anyway. But it's nice to have it. it might just locked into place. place. You just keep, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah, it just keeps it locked into place. Excellent. So yeah, I mean, that, those are the buttons on it, and it's um, it's a really fantastic thing. It's a, it's a brilliant lens. Yeah, yeah. well, like really I say, nice we started, it. we kicked, we kicked this off really, didn't we? Talking about how versatile it is. Um, yeah, and the fact that 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 although it's a large focal length up to four hundred mil, it starts at a hundred, which is great for portraiture. So maybe it'd be yeah. a good idea now to to pop up just let's pop up a few examples of, of some images yeah. that you've got there. Yeah, sure. So um, I took it down to um, this was uh, it was last year now actually. I took it down mm. to I think it was just after, just 
after it was released, I think. Um, I forget which month it was released in, but it was probably yeah. May or June, something like I that. I think it was. I think it was, yeah. Yeah, and I took it down to Yorkshire, to Bempton Cliffs, which is an RSPB reserve down there. Um, fantastic place to visit if you've, if you've got mm. to, if you're in the area, you know, they've, especially when... Uh, the seabirds are around in the in the sort yeah. of spring, and you've got you know you've got the puffins in and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was I was I was amazed to be honest. I, I I I sort of thought I wonder how you know I wonder how it will cope compared to because I mean I've used some sort of five or ten grand lenses yeah. in the past to do yeah. this kind of thing. Big, and I thought I wonder how yeah, it'll big, cope. And and yeah, I mean su- super sharp. Really surprised. Very good at the focusing. I mean, I used it on this um, this. Uh, Sony, which everyone knows, has very good focusing, and it's yeah. absolutely remarkable. I mean, it keeps up perfectly fast. with the with the camera. Very yeah. fast, very reliable, um, and uh, the the OS is extremely good. The, the panning the mode two we were just talking about, the panning mode is brilliant because right. um, you know the birds are sort of going past you sort of sideways if you like because they're just constantly yeah. flying past it on yeah. the top along the top of the cliff. Yeah. Um, so I'll just bring up a shot there. You can see, uh, Look at that. and you can track a bird like that. I mean, they're moving extremely quickly. You know, yeah. you're talking, I don't know how many miles an hour, but it, it's very fast. It's like a car going past very close to you. Yeah, you know, they're amazing. On the wind, they're so quick. And um, uh, yeah, remarkable. It's a stunning just, shot. Oh, thank you. Well, it's a, not, yeah. not an award winner, but uh, interesting well, just to stunning. test it It's not an easy um, photography to undertake, is it? And, uh, no, it's not. You know, you, you need the tools that help you to achieve the image. Um, yes. You know. And and some practice and some like anything in life, you've got to practice, haven't you, to to get those those great results. But but um, yeah. having the tools at your hands as well, it, it certainly helps, doesn't it? And obviously the it technology does. in that lens and, and the camera combined helps you to achieve that sort of result. But yeah, that's right. The, the hit rate is remarkably high actually on this lens. You, 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 right. You'd expect to get home and think, oh, you know, I've taken uh, yeah. I've taken yeah. two thousand shots and I've only got you know, 20 yeah. good ones because everything else is just yeah. slightly. But yeah, it's, it's amazing how well it keeps up with very, very well, fast I, moving. I up. remember the days when we used to do that shooting film. So, because uh, I'm, li- I'm only a fraction older than you, Tim, not much, just a little bit. You know, I know <laughs> the camera angle's probably making it look worse. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, of course, with film, you used to take, you know, 36, 72 shots and you never know how many you was actually going to get when you got them developed, you know, where, where, whether they're going to be any good or not. So that's right. It's Especially a bit easier with digital, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A bit easier yeah. with digital, and you can take so many images. But, but um, yeah, you still need those tools to to, to capture that that wonderful shot. You do, uh, mm. you do absolutely. And we can have a look at this one here. So it's, I'm just going to zoom in on the eye of that kind of right hand bird there. Yeah. Um, so that's just a, that's just cropped in. So this was wow. a 400 mil wide open. I mean, it's so sharp. It's unbelievable. Like the, the yeah, you know, the, the feathers there and the um, and the you know the pupil of the eye. Yes, yeah. so, excellent. So sharp remarkable um it's a couple yeah, more of really good there of a, wow of a, what is that is that a kitty well, i can't remember what, what i don't know i'm not now, pro- yeah no don't i looked sure. them all up when i got home but i forgot yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. brilliant and there's yeah, the, the, there. the obligatory puffing yeah yeah that's it yeah but the the gannets yeah. are the easiest to shoot because they're a bit bigger and yeah. um and they're a bit sort of perhaps a bit more there was loads of them you know so yeah yeah everywhere. exactly you've got plenty so, to choose from yeah and yeah. um yeah, uh, the other thing I was a bit, I was kind of w- concerned about when I went is that mm-hmm. I thought, I wonder if the birds are a long way off, which, you know, sometimes you can't get near to wildlife. Yeah. Can you? Is 400 enough or do you need like yeah. that, that extra bit, the 600 or something? And again, remarkable, you know, you, 400 was easily enough, I would say, even right. too long for a lot of stuff. Right. You know, so, yeah. 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 I, yeah. I found myself sort of somewhere in the middle of the zoom range for a lot of it. Yeah. So, you know. It's incredible, especially for the. It's a great, it's a great, great focal length, no doubt about that. Four hundred mil, but um, yeah. should somebody want to extend that range still further, then there is a couple of converters, isn't there? Teleconverters that could be used in conjunction with it. That's right. Yeah, um, we 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 actually released them at the same time as this lens. Mm. So um, there were two. There was a one point four and a and a two times, and they were developed for mirrorless uh, specifically. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, they're they're. Excellent uh, quality of the um, of the uh, image isn't isn't um, uh-huh. significantly reduced, so it's uh, it's they're very very sharp. Um, yeah, so uh, they're they're available. So that's a, that's an option, isn't it? Should you feel you need that little bit extra focal length at any point, then uh, then that you could be popping in between the body and the lens. But yeah, and worth saying they're you... only on L mount at the moment, so they're not on E mount yet. But um, yeah, 
hopefully yeah. we'll, we'll get those at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good. Okay. Let's um, let's have a look at another a couple more images. Um, yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. Did we? I can't remember what we what we've looked at already. Was it just the wildlife shot so far? We've just done the what? Just done your fabulous wildlife shot so far. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, what about these pictures you took in your local village? Have you got those? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So. Um, so this this one I just took on my smartphone just to, just as a sort of a, an establishing shot just to show. Right. So I was walking around and I saw this nice magnolia tree, um, which is the other side of a wall. Um, yeah. Now with a. This is taken with a smartphone, so you can just sort of see what's going on. Yes, go. Interesting, interesting wall, isn't it? With the um, yeah, sort of having the. Look, I think I assume they're great. Bricks. Yeah, but what? I assume they're they, they, they run out of bricks, they run out of red bricks, <laughs> and then they put a, they put a row of yellow on, and then they thought, oh, actually, we found some more red ones. There they are. <laughs> we'll so they on, some, yeah. And then they ran out of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, the tree over the wall. You'd never shoot. You'd never get that with a fifty mil or a you know a, or an eighty-five or anything. It's just too far no, away. Yeah. Yeah, um, but this this is it with um, at four hundred mil, so you can you right. can get in so close, you know, just by yeah, just yeah, sort of exactly. The wall. So it, it's almost become a different type of photography. It almost looks like it could have been taken with a macro lens. Yeah, it kind of opens up new possibilities mm. for you that you just couldn't get with a with a regular sort of a, a yeah. standard zoom or you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, um, uh, yeah, and then. Here's one of some bluebells. We were saying earlier that you can get in quite close. Um, I don't yeah. think this is at the closest focusing distance, actually, but um, uh, you can certainly shoot kind of smaller objects, you know, um, flowers and so yeah. on, quite quite easily uh, at 400 mil, particularly. Yeah. And um, very nice background blur as well there. Um, it is, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Not, not distracting yeah. or anything. Again, like we're saying, it 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 sometimes you with a with a with a lens that you think is specific to a certain type of use, it's nice to to, to take it out of that scenario and use it somehow in a way that you wouldn't i know recently we were talking to somebody who was using one of our 24 mil wide angle lenses and you think of that as a as a landscape uh, lens focal length but they were actually doing nice close-up images with it so so yeah. again it's nice to take the lens and take it out of its fixed boundaries and start using it in a in a different environment and i think that's something yeah. that 100 to 400 can be used you know uh very well for yes we've got um we've got a few collaborators that we use uh, with sigma um for social media posts and articles and stuff and yeah. um they're they're th three landscapers particularly that i'm thinking of and they're brilliant photographers and um they picked up this 100 400 recently and right. they said it's like that i mean it's for all three of them it's their like main squeeze at the moment they absolutely love yeah. it it's, it's such yeah. a um a one guy particularly uh, jack lodge who um, we work with a bit He's a great photographer and he's he's using it so much at the moment he just loves it wow. uh, you know and it's not really a landscape it's, lens you know is it it's not, not no exactly and like well like we said at the beginning it, it's it's light enough it's compact enough that it is a product that you can throw into your kit bag and and not yeah. feel like you're lugging something really big and heavy around with you but gives you that versatility that's right yeah mm. now when i took this into town um yesterday uh so i took a couple of shots of streets and Actually, one nice thing about this lens that I really liked, or at least about this focal length, is that when you shoot in town centres with regular sort of regular lenses, standard yeah. primes and, and standard zooms, I often find that it's hard to get a shot that hasn't got clutter in it. You know, everything's got right. cars in and people and there's like signs and mm. I don't know, adverts and yeah, all sorts of stuff. Spoil yeah. the image. Yeah. Yeah, right, exactly. And it's because you haven't got that that sort of very tight angle of view available yeah. to you you can't get rid of it you're like oh just no. i can't get an angle where i'm not where it's not there's no yeah. clutter um but this is one nice thing i found with this that as soon as you start you know as soon as you start zooming in especially at the 400 mil end you can eliminate all of that because you've got a yeah. very very tight angle of view so all you've got to do is get back and yeah. zoom in and you can eliminate it all so for example this shot yeah, like that. yeah exactly that's a great example yeah um, and it almost looks like it, it flattens everything into some slightly different perspective doesn't it yeah that's right you can really compress the, compress mm. the perspective right down um uh and actually if we if we crop into that image so you see the um uh how can i explain you see there's a sort of a, a roof at, in the right top middle and there's like a green line running down the roof like a yeah copper, yeah, a copper, yeah. Um, whatever it is or lead i think yeah um so if I go in a bit closer on that, you can see very yeah. sharp. I don't know right. how, how how well this will show on the uh, over the mm. sort of the the live, but, but it's um, yeah. yeah it, you can see clearly, really that yeah, it, it, it's still sharp, very sharp, no doubt about that. 
Yeah, incredible, yeah. Um, and then another one, this was shot 125 mil, so actually not even that zoomed in, but it was a, there was a car right beneath my shit, my eye line there, so just and just just off the bottom of the shot. And then there was some people just kind of hanging out bottom right. Yeah, yeah. You'd never have been able to get rid of those without a, without a bit more a bit more no, reach. Exactly. So just kind of step back and zoomed in, and yeah. Um, yeah, it makes a big difference. Yeah. And again, it's it, it it's highlighting the fact that yeah, don't think of this lens as as just a yeah something to take pictures of things that are a long way away. Use it on things that are closer, but just to, to change the perspective of the image that you're taking. You don't have to take street photography with a wide angle lens or such. You can you can act, actually use a telephoto and bring that perspective into a different angle. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's really effective. Yeah. And that, just yeah. to go over the price again, uh, it is. Yes. Um, there we go. Yep. There we go. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, 900 quid. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the SRP or the RRP. Yeah, yeah, um, uh, yeah. And I, d I don't know actually what the street price is. I assume it's pretty much the same as the I, SRP. I, I think the it. Moment. I think it currently yeah, it's, it's eight nine nine. I think yeah, that tends yeah. to be the price it's out there, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's quite yeah. quite a new lens, isn't it? So uh, mm. yeah, yeah. No, it's a it's a fabulous product, no doubt about that. And it and it, like we said at the very beginning, it it, it complements an amazing product lineup of uh, of lenses for full frame mirrorless. Um, and like mm. we said. There's also the version of it for uh, for uh, the non mirrorless full frame as well, which yeah. uh, which is good to cover both options. But yeah, great product, great price, light, small. I think hopefully we've mentioned today some some areas where perhaps you can use the lens where you might not have thought of using it. You know, which yeah. again I think you know push the boundaries with it. Why not? It's what it's designed to do. So yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, great now, product, Steve, great images. Before we go, let me ask you. Um, let me ask you a question. Would you buy this or the one fifty to six hundred C? Because they're about the same price. So which? Would yeah, you, go you know that's a good question. You know, probably for me, I'm a. I, I, oh yeah, good question. But I, I'd probably go hundred to four hundred. Probably would, because yeah. I don't think I need to go beyond four hundred mil. Um, and I like the fact that it's compact and lightweight, and it, you know I can because again, it, like. 150 600 an incredible lens of course but mm. I, I i think if you buy a kit that that you don't want to carry around with you all of the time it it, mm. it stops you from taking images because yeah. you know you, you you want something that you can feel comfortable carrying with you all the time that yeah. way then you're going to be more inclined to use it for what you want to use it for in the first place you're not going to want to leave it in the car when you're walking around it's light enough to carry around with you so bring it with you yeah um yeah, so definitely that, something to be said for that yeah, definitely, you know, and, and that's what we're all about. That's what we're about as an imaging company. We want people taking photographs. So, you know, that's that's what we create these products for is is, mm. is, is to people to be able to use their imagination and to, to produce ultimately. I always remember back in my retail days many years ago, um, we, we were encouraged not to necessarily sell the product. We were encouraged to sell the image it creates. Yeah. Um, and then, then you would then want to buy the product. And, and that's a lot of what Sigma does is, is ultimately we, we want to see fantastic imagery out there and amazing products, amazing images. And to do that, you need great products to do that. So image first product is what brings that image. So did that yeah. kind of make sense? Yeah. 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 I thought that was going to be one of those long stories. Like when you normally when you say back in my retail days, it, you know, I usually... Uh, I usually like toss another log on the fire and just kind of <laughs> yeah. sit back and uh, oh, yeah. oh, open up a open up a bottle of red wine. It's going to be yeah. in it for the long haul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try. I just try and get a quick nap as well while I'm uh, just probably, <laughs> while you're getting warmed up. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was the short and edited version. We'll um, uh, 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 we'll catch up another day and I'll go through all uh, my retail career with you. You'd like that? Yeah, like, yeah. Looking forward to that, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no. That's a, I think that's a good uh, a good explanation of of what you know of, the, of between those two. I think that definitely that. I think yeah. that if you if you if you shoot in just wildlife, that's all you do, and you yeah. and perhaps you they're sort of wildlife that you need a bit of that bit. Of exactly. Coverage. Then the one fifty six hundred, absolutely amazing, or the sixty to six hundred yeah. as well. You know, they they're yeah. great options. But if you want it for you a general a bit of purpose, yeah, a bit of everything. As we've indicated, shown today, if you're doing a bit of close-up work, you're doing a bit of shooting in, in beautiful villages or birds, whatever it might be, it's, it's incredibly versatile, that focal length, yeah. 100 to 400, and, yeah, and without is. being too heavy. 
uh, and big to carry around with you all the time. Yeah, lovely. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Brilliant. Well, that's, it's been excellent. You know, it's been nice yeah. to get a little bit of, a, of an in-depth insight into one of our lenses. We tend to talk about this one, that one, this one. You know, so uh, yeah, it's nice to focus on one in particular. So uh, thank you for that, Tim. Not at all. Yeah. And, and, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. We, it just leaves us really to say, um, I hope everyone watching out there enjoys this event that Campkins have put on again this weekend and uh, get what you can out of it. Uh, hope it enhances and, and gives you an opportunity to uh, stretch your photography that much further again. So thanks again, Tim. Yeah. And uh, we'll, Cheers, we'll, we'll see you all again soon. Take care. Great. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.